Another day around the garage, another day with the bits of bike build. Just first off, like to say thank you to all you like that uh, have left some comments in the comment section. Pretty nice of you, and uh, well appreciated. There's some of your comments there. Makes me want to get out here in the freezing cold and do some more. <laughs> but um, let's have some lighting. Bosh! There you go, a bit of light in the garage. I'm going to show you, you know you get the, the, the stubborn gaskets, these gaskets that just don't want to come off no matter how much you try, they just like they've been on there for years, they just break up and it's just impossible to get them off of it, isn't it? We've all been there, we all know that. So let's just take that bearing out and I'll show you how I get these gaskets off. I don't think this bearing's been out either for fucking donkey's years. Don't want to move, does it? <coughs> Alright, and that's got to be original original um, seal, that thing. Let me get a punch. Oh, that, or that somebody stuck it in with some glue. Try this. Try this method. There we go. That's a better method. Yeah, look at that. See the rubber st stuck on the inside. So I'm going to use my ingenious way to get that off as well. And I'll show you how we do that. It's handy having a bit of tube, which is pretty much the right size anyway. So, my hot tip of the day how to get those fucking stubborn gaskets and shit off. Blowtorch. Eat it up. Give it some whirly with a blowtorch. I'll take no responsibility if anything goes wrong while you're doing this. If you burn your hands, or you actually melt it. <laughs> and uh, whatever they say, whatever they say about not using Stanley blades on gaskets, uh, ignore that. You can use a Stanley blade to get gaskets off, because I do it all the time, most of the time. Especially ones like this. But, um, what I do, what I don't use is Stanley blades with knackered edges on them. I always use a new one. But them two are no good. So if you're going to get gaskets off of a Stanley blade, always use a new Stanley blade or a new blade because you don't want to don't want to score the surface up with an old blade. And I'll show you in a sec. This also helps get all that shit off that's stuck on the inside there as well. There we go. We'll just wiggle it around like that. I can feel the heat off of this thing. That's it, they come off much easy. So you're not actually scraping anything. Just cutting into the bottom of them. Right. The Stanley blade's too hot to hold now. So we'll grab another Stanley blade. So 
So that's that's the blade torch method of getting the uh, frost names there. And when you've got your standy blade, and you've, you've got your standy blade here as well. So basically, just slice that. Rubber off. Go around with your scotch bright to get all the bits off. A little tiny bit left. Come on, we can do it before your hands give up. Yeah, that's good enough. And there you go. Nicely, nicely clean, ready for the new seal. I think we'll fucking burn it off next time. Whacking on. Yeah, put the O ring on. That's it. Not forgetting the uh, little rubber, little rubber plug for this side. Splinch a little bit of grease around there as well. <laughs> So that, that pin goes there. Don't want to fucking lose that at all. And then, let's take that out a second. Don't need any just yet. Yeah, so this is this is where we want to put our double hold that so you don't push it off the other side. So you, to do the points using one set of points, we got a double double cam lobe, double lobe cam. Which we're going to use. Just put him on there for now, so that I don't um, lose him. Right, so we're only going to use one set of points. Although they've got two sets in here, one set would be a spare set, really. So I can use any set. Doesn't matter which set. I have to find some screws for them. Good as gold, look at that. And you can chuck him through there. You can get around up into the coil and stuff up here. Oh yeah, I need to get some condensers. Right. 
If I kick it over, then you should see both of them. Let's give it a bit, a bit of better action. Better action. With the dual, dual lobe can, you should be able to see both of them opening and closing at the same time. Oh, they, they both open at the same time. I can't see it from here. <laughs> Do you like the feel of this already? I like the feel of this already. Right, setting up the points will be another day. Guess I'm just putting all the bits and pieces back together for the moment. Let me do all that, all that afterwards. Right, my um, on top dead centre mark. So that would top dead centre on this side. So we can do these up. So just screw them all the way in till it stops. Back it off a little bit, go find their feeder gauges. Six foul these ones on this model. Six foul. Or point fifteen millimetres. That's it. That's in there. That's just got a slight bit of friction on that. Just a slight. Let me find the fucking span on it. friction and do it up. It feels lovely. It feels absolutely lovely. No movement. Let's try the next size up. Oh I won't go in there so I eat. Well, the seven won't go in there, it's pretty fucking tight, but the six goes in and out, in and lovely. So we just make sure we nip them up. That's it. And basically, that's all you do, just to set them up. So that one's done do the other side and the back too and I'll put the covers on I could put the cover on that one now actually but let's say you were uh, easy easy setting the tappets on these these inlet inlet uh, valves these ones here believe it or not they're on this model they're only two thou two thousandths of an inch or 0 0.05 millimeters so it's hardly worth it isn't it it's thinner than a bit of paper Because this this uh, this actual model of um, bike is the XS 650D. I think it's 1976. This engine, the US spec, the 447 crank. Yeah, this is the the, the US spec version, which only has. I don't get why. Uh, Don't get why the difference though, because all the fucking all the uh, stuff's more or less the same, isn't it? Let's tighten that up. Yeah, that's all right. Snug's a bug in a rug. You can feel that. You can feel it. Go that way, eh? I can't wind it around.
find again. The bearing that come out of it has got a roller missing. So we got ourselves a new bearing. So first off, the first part of the, uh, the puzzle is a small, I think it's about a mil thick, that washer. He goes on first. Then you've got a two mil one. He goes on second. And that's enough space then to avoid your your basket smashing into the, the casing. You put a huge bit flippy bit in there. He goes in. Let me get a basket. It goes on. Come on, in you go. There you go. So he goes on. There's enough gap there now for that to avoid, to avoid it and that. Now we're going to find our new bearing. Get a lot of my stuff from the ambits. Yeah, you know, a much uprated bearing there. Much better than the, uh, the original ones, by the bit. So we put our frost washer on. Then we put a nice new, oh, that feels lovely that. Nice new roller bearing goes on. There. And then where is it? And we've got another two mil, another big two mil washer goes on over that. And then the other the other half of the punch. on top. He goes in there like that. Then this model, on this model there is no um, locking washer. There's no uh, there's no uh, washer which which will sit anywhere in there to, to hold it anyway. And what you've got is these the con Conical washers are they called? Them? It's like a, a washer with a, a bulge in it. So basically you stick that on there and then you do this up to Kingdom Come. Nip that up to start with. done up now. There's a 44 pounds this fork. Push rods in it in the right order. So we've got this one with a little lump bit on the start, he goes in first. And you stick a little bearing in there. And you've got the long one, he goes in there. So he goes in there. You've got another ball bearing. Problem with these getting these screws out because they're all they're always a bit naff. Yeah, 
the heads on the screws are all a bit neff, so I've got some new screws to go in there. And you can these. Yeah, I've got the new new screws and the new alley parts. It sits inside the spring there. Performance, excess performance. Let me screw that in. We do that for the rest of them. Fucking camera fucking it's turned itself off again. I think it's after 20 minutes, isn't it, that it fucking turns off. If you didn't if you didn't see it up uprated spring guides and new screws in these, hold all them in place. The old ones are a bit worn, so maybe some new ones in there. Don't forget the washer for the um, the kickstart shaft. Very important that washer. Very important. And it's time to get fucking greasy again with the gaskets. Fuck it, must get through some fucking shit with this stuff. Two types of these these gaskets. I think whoever there's two companies that make them different. And I'll show you a second why this particular gasket that I'm putting on now I'm not too keen on compared to the other gaskets. And I'll show you why in a second. I think I might have mentioned it before in a, in a previous video. That cut out there. For the, for the oil way that goes like so all right I cut out it's way too big and you've only got a little tiny weeny bit of uh, you can't see what I'm fucking talking about right what I don't like about these gaskets is this cutout is too big there's no need for that massive big cutout there and there's only a little tiny little tiny bit there which is sealing this 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 part on, if you know what I mean. I mean that that is that is on there, but I don't like it because it's. I mean, if you got you got oil pressure going through here, and what goes through here, the oil goes through, and then it sprays onto the comrods, and that's where the oil goes through. It sprays on the comrods and goes up onto onto your, your cams there. And if that decided to split that little piece there or well, wasn't wasn't connecting properly or or whatever and the oil just it would just pump round it wouldn't go up and around your engine. But there are other gaskets that are made with actually that piece blocked off. So you just got a little tiny slot. And they're the gaskets I prefer, not these ones. So <clears throat> I mean I'm putting this one on for now but I will change that gasket out for a, um, a, a better one. I'm 
gonna. Right, that's that side done. So far so good. I need to wire it. Get some condensers and wire these in. I'll wire this coil in. I still need to put a little bit of bracket across there as well. And this one goes to one of these and a and a and a, and a condenser. I might. I suppose what I could have is a little one. Uh, <coughs> I was thinking the other day where the switch goes for the light switch and the headlight. Is have the wires come up up into here so I can switch from one set of points to the other set of points. Why is that getting a bit too too silly? Because if one fails I'm gonna have to get up under the tank somehow to swap these wires over. But if I had a switch on the headlight I could just switch it over couldn't I? I have to think about that. Wire these in I'm not use half of these wires because it's that's, that's the uh, old the, uh, the old pickup uh, pickups for the electronic ignition and is over here for the electronic ignition and the the old rectifier regulator, but I'm not using none of them. So I'm just using the PMA wires, which are going to plug into these three white wires, wires here. And that come round to these three wires that are in this side to go to the regulator reg rectifier. And that goes round to the battery. So it needs half of them wires there. And I've got some new BAES plugs to go in it. And I have to get some oil. I need to get a gear selector shaft uh, uh, pedal because the one. This engine actually come out of the chop and uh, that's got a different selector pedal on that. Brakes work. Kickstart all on. So that's alright. I have to work out what exhausts I'm going to put on it. Not quite sure what exhausts I'm going to put on it yet. I don't really want to use the ones off the chop because they're a bit too loud. So I have to, um, have to think about that. Need to get a Stanley knife and cut these off because that's fucking ugly, that isn't it? And these gaskets sticking right up like that and on the bottom. And that pedal's a bit close to the a bit close to the, to the case in there as well, so I might put some washers in this to push that away from it a little bit. And uh, that's it for the that's it for today, I reckon. It's getting a bit too nippy now, so I'm gonna. Uh, call it a day with this one and then uh, come back tomorrow and do a bit more. Yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>